Hey, our review family, keep it, I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morse, the review guy, reviewing music for the love of music, and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be covering the new Blute Os Nord record entitled Disharmonium, Undreamable Abysses. Leave it to them to make a record that just sounds like it's straight out of Lovecraftian mythology. So Blute Osnord, if you're unfamiliar with them, have been one of the most prolific and long-running avant-garde black metal bands coming out of France. And France is already a hotbed for black metal of all shades. And usually if you hear avant-garde black metal, Blute Osnord is going to be somewhere in the mix for people that have heard of them. For people that kind of want that itch scratched of completely disorienting black metal that is so technical and so tightly produced, they are perfect. But here we are new record. I actually have not really followed this band that closely, and so stepping into this record I didn't really have any biases or preconceived notions of what they do. And in the most pun unintended way I can say, Blute Osnord portray themselves as completely disharmonious, but simultaneously somehow the most harmonious and melodic they felt in a bit. Demented and packed in an ice-tight and hellish level of torment, but dark in the melody way. No track on this record is untouched by the ghoulish wails that are just wall to wall in service as the vocals. The graveyard ethereal drones are not something that they are unfamiliar with or something that is even uncommon on their records, but here there is just so much echo put on them and a lot more layering to give them that full effect. And upon first listen, it can read as wallpaper. Just simply like a dizzying assortment of the same brand of avant-garde black metal absurdism that a lot of shock and awe black metal bands adopt nowadays. And I'll be the first to admit, I was not a fan of this record when I first spun it. But by the second listen, when I started sinking my teeth into this record more, I started to kind of pick up on the variation. And I think that's true of a lot of avant-garde metal bands. They'll hit you in a haze and a blur, and you won't be able to make out the finer details. And while this isn't really one of my favorite records of the year by any stretch, I think there are still some things to comment on. Take the opener, Chance of the Deep Ones. It's a fast-paced display of pure hysteria, and it has this amazing way of continuing to mount up tension as it progresses past its seven-minute long runtime that has a way of mounting up tension to a boiling point and featuring just blast beat upon blast beat upon blast beat with so much of this echo on the vocals and layering on the instrumental. It's like this macabre, morbid, dark cathedral. Whereas Into the Woods, in comparison, is a much more spacious and atmospheric track, I'd say it's also much more paced than practically everything else on the record, a grittier, finer tone to everything, muddier production, and it does speed up near the midway point, but by the end of the track, it settles back into the atmospheric place that it started in pivoting back into its despondent, lost crunch by the end and leaving you with that crushed feeling. Because for so much noise and so much chaos, there really are some moments here that are just maddening and just pure insanity. And you know what? While on the topic of Into the Woods, before I continue, I just want to say something about this introduction. It's what I imagine a schizophrenic person might feel internally when they're going through an episode, or maybe something similar to Everywhere at the End of Time, you know, that album about dementia when, like, the, the chronic terminal late stage hits and everything just becomes like a white overlay. Something's just blinding and disorienting about the swells and dissensions on this track. I, I can't put a finger on it, but it's probably one of the more creepy and unsettling things of the year, which given this project's trajectory in the past, I'm not sure why I would really expect anything less to come out of its canon. Though I will say around the three minute mark of the track that follows it, Neptune's Eye, they do recycle a little bit of that eclecticness and erraticness of Into the Woods in a way that makes it feel a little cheapened and less unique and stand out. And it's just simply done better on Into the Woods. And I think transitionally going from Into the Woods straight into Neptune's Eye, it really could have been a little more seamless. It's completely jarring. That's the only word I can use to describe it. 
Perhaps that was the point, I won't like presume, but I can only go off what I'm given. And as of now, it really is a jarring and shocking transition. So unless that was the point, I think maybe rearranging the tracks or paying more mind to the flow of it, given this track listing isn't necessarily the longest in the world, I would have liked to see a little bit more done with the transitions, because that's a big issue I have with this record. A lot of it does blur and blend together. They use a lot of the same ideas. The repetition becomes very apparent and the transition from track to track makes it not necessarily seem like a full body project with different parts to it but just this one machine without much variation except for the minor little tweaks that might appear at various points but those various point change-ups aren't enough to carry this track listing on its back alone. Truth be told this really is just a base level normal avant-garde metal record an avant-garde black metal record and the the major standout things are those lost and despondent textures and of course I do love the reverb and the echo on those wails, those ghoulish howls into oblivion, but otherwise every single track just blends into this dizzying black metal assortment that feels a lot like what you would get from like a Despell Omega or a Portal, both of which probably would take this style and do it a bit better. Now I understand Blue Dust Nord have made a lot of records. It's a very prolific project, so maybe it's a little bit of steam running out, but I just was not as sort of into this creatively and I didn't feel as much of that hot energy that has been prevalent on some of the band's projects in the past unfortunately. Without a doubt they pose a threat and they scratch a certain itch for that French avant-garde black metal scene, but it definitely left me wanting a little bit more. And even on the second listen and a bit of the third listen, I started just kind of getting a little bit of fatigue from what they were doing, and there just isn't that much to make me want to come back to this, not only from their own standpoint, but other records that are currently in the genre. But for people that want a certain itch scratched, I can see why it would be really good. There are enough moments here to keep it from being like a negative, but pretty much I'm just feeling a solid 5 out of 10 on this record, and that is a wrap. Have you heard this new Blue Dots Nord record, Disharmonium Undreamable Abysses? That is a mouthful. If you have, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. I would love to discuss this record with you. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morse, the review guy, and I'm signing off saying farewell.